Shepard? With the heat of summer and full screen, I'll be the first to admit. Summer isn't my favorite season. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with summer. The bursting light, color, and lifting of snow is a warm welcome. But then the humidity, harsh sun, and bounty above. Mostly ticks and mosquitoes, not my favorite. It's not so much the heat, but the humidity. And the wet bulb temperature is brutal. I've gotten heat stroke before and it's not fun, but I still have a hard time recognizing when I'm pushing my body too hard. Even so, I think it's important to live with the ebb and flow of each season and find joy, no matter how brief, in what each season has to offer. I love to garden and nothing's more fun than having fresh veggies just outside your doorstep. It's easy to find joy in the beautiful changing colors of the meadows, the glow of the fireflies at night, or seasonal toad and frog popolips where a pond and creeks overflow with tadpoles and seemingly thousands of baby frogs hop about the sheep grazing. Currently, the soft whites of daisies have yielded to the deep purples of thistle and the delicate lilacs of a wild bergamot and wild mint. And so, with all that life and color, how do we keep our sheep cool? Firstly, through free access of fresh, clean, and cool water. There are several creeks and one pond that are fed from a mountain runoff. A family member dug the pond a while ago. The first year was mainly dry, and the sheep did a wonderful job hopping about it and making sure to compact the soil in preparation for the future. With our water trough, it's always topped off, sometimes too much, and I do have a log floating in it, just as a safety measure to keep not only the chickens safe from falling in, but providing wildlife a way out, just in case they slip in. Secondly, through a process called silver pasture, also known as a practice of agroforestry, where sheep and other livestock graze amongst the trees. I've planted deciduous native trees that provide food, shelter, and shade for multiple species during the growing season, as well as a wind barrier along the perimeter consisting of evergreen trees. They're so tiny now, but I try and remind myself that the best things take time, and that slow living is a marathon, not a sprint. That comes slow land as well. The evergreens are going to be the future home for our songbirds and other residents. The sheep have several shelters scattered throughout, but the flock mainly prefer to hang out in the play yard. The canopy of trees really keep the ground noticeably cooler, as well as allowing airflow. All these systems really provide quite a bit of cooling for the flock. The sheep have their own technique too. They change their grazing habits from foraging during the afternoon. Now they enjoy grazing in the early morning and throughout the cool of the nights. They have free access to come and go as they please. So often what you see is the sheep going out to the pastures or forest, eating as much forage as they can, then coming back to their favorite spot and ruminating. This rumination process is where the sheep, goats, and cows finish chewing and digesting all that pasture grass and leaves. They all spend that time collecting. So if you spot your sheep not ruminating, then you know something's stressing them out. As the sheep get heat stressed though, they may become more sluggish, panting excessively, even with their tongue hanging out or huddled around what bare patches of shade they can find. I've included references to the various sources of information. It's a bit beyond what I wanted to cover for the scope of this video, but just in case you need it, it's there. Now on to a lighter topic. When it comes to summer, nothing beats coming in from that heat and having something nice to cool off with. To me, I think of frozen treats, mainly ice cream. Growing up, my great grandpa made the best ice cream. Eventually, I learned how simple it was to make. All we needed was a bag of ice, rock salt, and ice cream base. The train was electric and it was incredibly loud. My father would wrap it up in a towel and try in vain to muffle the sound. Nowadays, I use an ice cream machine which is much quieter, so not until particularities. Each country has their own industry standard for what can be classified as ice cream. People can get really heated on such a cool subject. Okay, so bad jokes aside, for the purpose of this video, I'm using the word ice cream to describe this general frozen sheep's milk product. I'm using full fat sheep milk here. It's a mix of various lactation stages for my flock. If you want a creamier product, just substitute half a cup or more of the milk with full cream. My grandpa's recipe used mainly store-bought cow's milk and then later family members would make it skim milk. It still yields a very good ice cream. The only caveat is it does get icy, and with the cow skim milk especially. It yields like tasty, Luigi, icy type layer on the bottom of the tub. Moving on, so in the spirit of summer, I thought nothing speaks, campfires, quiet fun, and cozy moments more than s'mores inspired ice cream. So for this ice cream, I'm making a vanilla custard base where I'll cut in the roasted marshmallows. 
modify if need be and see what can work from there. It's different than what my grandpa would make, but my thinking is that I have a lot of eggs and milk and the addition of egg yolk will yield a creamier base that might be more palatable to a wider base and should it be needed to be frozen for a while, it'll still retain a softish, scoopable texture. I like my ices, gelatos, and paletas, but for today I'm going for a silky, smooth texture and save the other cells for another day. I really like keeping this simple and easy going. If you're allergic to eggs, you can just omit this and add cream or leave as is with just milk alone, if you'd like. So first off, let's roast marshmallows. If you don't have a campfire going already, let's preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. On the slip mat or parchment paper lined pan, cook eight through 10 marshmallows, three to four minutes. They'll puff up a bit and then move the pan to the top rack or not, <laughs> and set your oven to broil. Cook an additional two to three minutes till they're golden brown. Remove from the oven and set aside to cool. Now onto the ice cream bags. We need three cups of milk, one cup of sugar, eight egg yolks, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a pinch of salt. I'm separating the egg yolks carefully, reserving the whites for another recipe I wanna make later on. Rings or rum cake. Not sure yet, but something easy. If I get a little bit of yolk in the whites, I find it helps to use the eggshell to pull that yolk right out of the whites. Something about chemicals and science of the eggshell make it work. We're gonna temper these egg yolks later on, but for now, let's get all our egg yolks, mix in one cup of sugar and a pinch of salt. Beat it really well, it may lighten some. Once thoroughly mixed, set aside and let's work on our milk. Bring your milk to a simmer in a medium sized pot over medium heat for about five minutes. It's important to keep an eye on it so it doesn't boil over. Remove it from the heat and cool it down to about room temperature. Now let's get on to tempering the eggs. While whisking, take a spoonful of warmed milk and slowly add the milk into the egg mix. I like to do this a few more times, like four to five, until I'm confident the eggs won't scramble or the mix is warm to the touch. Then let's add the egg mix back into the warmed milk and then return the pot of now milk egg mix to the heat on medium low. Let's stir it gently, scraping the bottom of the pan to the milk. Egg mix begins to thicken and coat the back of the spoon. Let's remove it from the heat and strain into a bowl and stir in the vanilla. If doing without eggs, like how my grandpa would do it, we stir in the milk and sugar and slowly heat it up till the sugar dissolves. And then we remove it from the heat and stir in the vanilla. Pull out about one to one and a half cups of, of your ice cream base. Add that to a blender and toss in with several roasted marshmallows. I used eight. Puree until smooth and strain if desired. Mine was pretty smooth with how I pureed it. Strain if desired in a separate bowl. Place both the vanilla base and the marshmallow base in the fridge to cool. Once cool, add to the ice cream machine. I started with the toasted marshmallow base so I could see how marshmallow we would get and then dye on the flavors. Now on to the results. When you're first pulling out the ice cream, it tends to be really soft. So I'm just gonna take a quick taste test and then pop it into the freezer to harden up. I was pretty surprised at how mellow the flavor of marshmallows actually ended up being. I was really concerned with the sweetness. I like my desserts to be Asian sweet, as they say, as opposed to deep south southern sweet for contrast. This hover is in between the two. It's pretty good. I'm just disappointed in how it's a bit more of a shadow of the spirit of marshmallows or essence of marshmallows rather than, yep, it tastes like campfire cooking. The texture is silky, smooth, and overall pleasant. You can still taste a bit of the egginess, so it might reduce the number of yolks for the next batch, as well as cut the sugar in half and add even more marshmallows. Maybe even chop it up and add bits. I didn't need to add more vanilla base into the marshmallow mix as I had thought, and I do feel the marshmallows would get lost in the villa if I swirled it around in the vanilla. So it's still super fun and very refreshing, even in these hot summer days. If you've made it this far, thank you so much. As a sheeper in milk, I'll continue the Dairy Chronicles, and then as the milking season winds down, I'll ease into the fiber prep and crafts. So thank you for staying with this series. Leave me an emoji of your favorite treats to cool down with, or let me know your thoughts on what the flavor of summer means to you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, don't forget, till I see you next time, you are awesome.